Okay. Um, this is an important topic. It, it just takes to, why do you want to use logon group, right? There are actually multiple reasons, right? Um, SAP system sometimes has significantly more than one or two assigned instances, right? You could. You know, earlier, you know, when I started in, in basis, right, you had you would go to a Fortune 500 company, 24, 36 app servers. Nowadays, because of vertical growth, right, with the processor speed, you know, you would see anywhere between three to nine, and you know, people would be able to manage most of their workload in that, right. Um, so earlier, you know, would have significantly more than one or two assigned instances. Each of these instances provide buffer areas, right? So they've got the memory buffer uh, for programs, dictionary objects, screen structures, and table content, right? Uh, and these buffers are filled with data and continuously updated during the runtime of the instance, right? That's where caching is happening. And the system attempts using various algorithms to organize the contents of the buffer. You know, all the algorithms are in and around LRU, least recently used, right? Least recently used, out of sight, out of mind kind of concept, right? It's going to be dumped from the buffer. That means if too many different kind of users keep coming to the same app server, you will be swapping a lot, right? Because they'll be using different programs, getting different data in, and you'll be churning a lot. So it's in your best interest to have similar user population. That means financial users going to one set of app servers, sales and distribution going to another set of app servers. Why? Because you're going to benefit by caching similar kind of programs, right? That's why people recommend that if you've got eight app servers, you're better off doing something like this, four for SD, three for FI, right? Saying that all SD users will go to these set of app servers, all FI users will go to that set of app servers. It used to be very common five or six years ago, but nowadays people don't do that. Why? Because if you do this, you're making changes on the front end, right? You now have got two logon pad entries, one for the SD department, the other for the FI department. People move from one department to the other department, and then you know all the confusion comes around, right? And this was good when memory was expensive. Nowadays, people want to limit. They don't want to do a functional dissection of their groups. They might create multiple groups, but they'll still always have a public or general kind of a group saying that most of the people need to go here. And they use it not in terms of making sure that the buffers are um, more aligned with the functional area so that I only have SD programs cached or FI programs cached, but more importantly for high availability. Saying that if I need to do an upgrade on one app server, I can take it out of the logon group and do it. Right? In fact, that's the other area I've seen a lot of basis admins struggle that what is the process? If you do define a logon group, what is the benefit of it, right? One is, if you have a logon group defined and app server crashes, as long as it's not the central instance, you're good to go, right? People will call the help desk because they've been booted out, but you just ask them to log in again. They'll report onto another app server, right? If so that's unplanned outage, right? Something crashes. If it's a planned outage, what do you want to do? If it's a planned outage, your approach has to be you first take an app server out of the logon group. Six to 12 hours before the outage window starts. So no new users will log in. But the existing users are still there. They'll continue to work, right? But at some point, if you're doing six to 12 hours, at some point their day is gonna get over, right? Or their shift is gonna get over, and they're gonna go back home. So what you'll see that the population on that app server in SMLG is decreasing, right, number of users. 
some point you will get to only four or five users connected. You just call them and have them disconnect. And now you have depleted anyone who is on that server. Now you shut it down. You you uh, you do whatever upgrade or maintenance you wanted to do. Bring it back up. Check it out, and then add it to the logon group. That's the concept of rolling upgrades. And you do the same for all app servers without taking an outage on your production system. A Fortune 500 company for planned outages on their core ERP system, you would be very, very lucky if you get more than 36 to 48 hours in a year. Be very very lucky, right? Even even that is difficult to get on the core ERP system. This is planned outage. Unplanned outage. Basically, if you get something like that, you you, you won't be going to the client side again, right? Uh, all right. So there you hear the talk about public. SAP always provides just a generic one called space. You should never use it. They just put a generic one in there, but you should not use it. You should create your own. All of these chapters typically tend to have an exercise at the end of it. My recommendation to you is you need to focus on, and to do the hands-on stuff, you need to focus on our provided exercises. However, read these exercises because don't do them, but at least if you read the question and the answer, you at least know, okay, this is what they did, right? If you try to do it, you'll get stuck because it might require some prerequisite that, you know, previously you should have had these three instances set up and then, you, you know, we have made sure in our exercises all the prerequisites are met. And also you'll find some multiple choice questions. Definitely do them. Very important from certification standpoint in here, right? As we scroll down. Um, next is they're talking about some common administrative transactions. We have looked at some of these and I want to spend some time here to kind of show you these transactions, right? Um, The important point here in SAP transactions is half the battle is to know the transaction code. And the second half of the battle is can you use that transaction effectively to resolve your issues, right? So SM04 and AL08, these are the transactions which give you the user list. So let's start looking at these. I go to SM04. SMO4 gives me the users who are logged in, right? However, caveat is SMO4 gives me the users who are logged in on the instance I am logged in, not on the whole system. SMO4 gives the users who are logged in on the instance I am currently executing SMO4 on. If you want to look at all the instances in the system, and who's logged in where, you have to use AL08 transactions. So if I did, this is SMO4, if I did AL08 in another window, AL08 is all users logged on. And see here it shows the two instances and the number of users logged on to both the instances, right? 00 has got 17, 02 has got 6. And then the details for 00 is underneath. People sending test messages. Um, right, so the number of users logged on to 00 and 02. Right, so AL08 system-wide, SM04, at the instance level, right? So that's the big difference between the two. Now let's look at SM04. What is SM04 telling us? 
important transaction and when we look at it this is where you will see the difference between a help desk guy doing SM04, a junior basis admin doing medium and senior guy, right? I was going to show you, right? Help desk would just stop here, right? Oh, are you logged in or not? I might not even know that I need to look at AL08 versus SM04, right? Obviously two different things. When you look at SM04, the first column is telling you the client. Now, SM04 is smart enough that even if I'm logged into a different client, right, I can see the users logged into all the clients. Right? So even if somebody was logged into client 000, I would see that person here. Then it's the user ID after that. Then it's the terminal, the name of the machine they are connecting from. On a global implementation, very, very important because typically they'll have some naming convention and you'll be able to see, okay, you know, people from Europe are logging in, people from Australia are logging in, ME are logging in, right? It'll give you some indication. And then the fourth column is the transaction they are executing. Right? Fifth column time is the last time they did a dialogue step any dialogue step. So sometimes if you see somebody has been there for too long, didn't do a dialogue step, and you wanted to terminate that session because that person is holding a lock or something, at least you know that has not done anything for three hours. Now, you can also set up parameters which will do a GUI or a log out, right? If you've not done anything for three hours, boom. Right? Terminate the session. Number of sessions, right? Number of sessions means from a single logon, how many sessions have you spawned? Very similar to a shell in Unix. But if you double click from the logon pad and log in twice, it's two separate logons, not two separate sessions. Session means if I click on this, create a new session, or if I do, forward slash O. Oh. One of those two things, right? Also, the type, very important. The type will tell whether it's traffic coming from graphical user interface, GUI, SAP GUI, or from a remote function call, RFC, or if I actually connected uh, through web, you'll see HTTP there. Right? So you would see either GUI, you would see either RFC, or you would see HTTP. So if I uh, were to um, if I were to do this, um, you know, SAP GUI is available on web also. It's called Web GUI, right? So this is I'm connecting to SP one, so. If I connect to SP1, this is I'm connecting to SAP GUI through a browser. Right? This is not SD1, it's SP1, right? Same look and feel, but it's opening within a browser. Um, menus, right? It's just that the transaction code looks a little different, status bar looks slightly different, uh, not significantly different, right? I can, right? I can do slash n SM has left the conference. If I do slash n SM04, I will see users connected, and guess what? In SP1, I'm the only user connected, and I'm using the HTTP plugin. This is coming through which work process? ICM, coming through Internet Communication Manager. From ICM it is going to the dispatcher. From the dispatcher it is going